Hello everyone. Today we will be starting with national income accounting and related concepts. So now let's begin with the chapter. So in common parlance, in common parlance, national income means the total value, the total value of goods and services produced annually in a country. So what does it mean that in common parlance means language, common language, national income means total value, total value of goods and services produced annually in a country means within a year how much of the value of goods and services are produced in a country. Let's take an example to understand this. For example, there are people in a country, they want to earn money. So to earn money, they will go to a factory to earn money. Okay, then they will work in a factory. Then what will happen then? Ultimately, goods and services, ultimately goods and services will be produced and that will be known as national income of a country. Okay. Now let's talk about what is national income. The total amount of income, the total amount of income accruing to a country from economic activities in a year's time is known as national income. The total amount of income to a country from economic activities. So what do you mean by economic activities? So economic activities are those activities which are intended to perform to generate some cash are known as economic activity. For example, your father works in a factory to earn money. That will be called an economic activity with the intention to generate some kind of money. And non-economic activity can be example of for your example your mother cooks food for you okay so when your mother is cooking food for you that will be called as non-economic activity because she is making that out of love for you okay so now i can conclude that you got to know what is economic activities in a year's time is known as national income okay so let's again revise it the total the total amount of income accruing to a country from economic activities in a year's time is known as national income Okay, he is known as national income. Income from economic activities accruing to a country he is known as national income. Income from accruing activities accruing to a country he is known as national income. Now, basically there are three methods to calculate national income. The first one is product method. Second one is expenditure method. Third one is income method. So now let's discuss them, let's discuss them one by one. So the first one is product method. What happens in product method is that the product method measures the contribution of each producing enterprise in the domestic territory of country. So what happens in product method is that measures the contribution of each producing each producing enterprise in the domestic territory of country. So what happens is product method that first of all, first of all, what happens that first of all, what it measures that measures the contribution of each producing it whatever any enterprise is producing it will measure the value in the domestic territory of country measure the contribution of each producing enterprise for national income first of all producing enterprise will be identified and then it will be classified according to its individual sector according to their activities for example this example you are seeing in the screen it is the example of a tissue factory so according to it it will be considered as manufacturing industry now the next point is estimating net value added by each producing enterprise as well as each industrial sector and adding up to the net value added by all the sectors. So what happens in product method that it measures measures the contribution measures the contribution of each producing enterprise means whatever whatever firms are engaged in manufacturing or any other goods okay manufacturing of any other goods relating to relating to producing something okay. So this is called product method within the domestic territory of country. Now let's talk about some precautions related to product method. So the first one is problem of double counting. So what is problem of double counting? When we when we add up the value of output of various sector, we should be careful to avoid double counting. This pitfall can be avoided by either counting. If the final value of the output or by including the extra value added by each to a firm. So let's understand it with the example. So for example, you are calculating national income through product method. Okay. So it is clearly stated that when we add up to the value of output of various sector, for example, there are uh, six, there are three sectors, railways, railways, manufacturing and service sectors. Okay. So when I am adding their product, adding their value to the, for calculating, National income from products method. I should be careful that do the two values twice the times the output should not be twice 
the times the output the output should not be included so that i get the very accurate answer so what does mean by problem of double counting we should not add a value twice at times now let's move on value addition in a particular year while calculating national income the value of goods added in a particular year in questions are added or the values which had previously been added to the stocks of raw material and goods have to be ignored have to be ignored GDP thus includes only those goods and services that are newly produced within the current period. So what happens is value addition in a particular year is that when we are calculating national income, the value of goods, the value of goods added in a particular year in question are added up. The values which had previously added been to the stocks and raw material goods have to be ignored. Means what does it state that? When we are asked to ask to calculate national income through product method, what happens that we should not take previous we should not take previous year in order to calculate value addition in a particular stage that we need to calculate we need to calculate national income of a current year if we are asked to we should ignore the previously been added to the stocks of raw material and goods means previous year's value have to be ignored. Now let's talk about stock appreciation. What happens in stock appreciation is that if any must be deducted from the value added, this is necessary as there is no increase in output. For example, wood which has not been converted into finished goods should not be added to the national income because no output, no output of goods has been produced. Now let's talk about production for self-consumption. What happens in production for self-consumption that the production of goods, the production of goods for self-consumption, the production of goods for self-consumption should be counted, should be counted by measuring national income. In this method, the production of goods for self-consumption should be valued at the prevailing market price. For example, Shyam, Shyam produces pencil and he takes the pencil for his own consumption that must be taken into the consideration. For So, in this manner, what happens that for example, Mr. Shyam is the manufacturer of pencil. One day, one day he withdraws some pencil for his own consumption. So what will happen that, what will happen that production for self-consumption will be happen and it should be added to the product method by calculating product method and it should not be ignored because production for self-consumption should be counted while measuring national income. So now we have already read, we have already read Four types of precaution for product method. Now let's revise it. So what happens in problem of double counting is that we should not add twice the time of output. Means we should not count one value two times. Value addition in a particular year we must calculate national income of the current year. Stock appreciation means the good which has not been transformed into the output which has not been transformed into the output should not be included in national income as there has no output increase in output okay production for self consumption i have already explained you here so watch the video till the end to get the full knowledge of chapter now let's talk about expenditure method what happens in expenditure method let's see the expenditure method approaches national income as total, total, remember, total spending on final goods and services produced within a nation during a year. So what happens in expenditure method that it calculates national income in such a way that total spending, total spending on final goods and services produced within a nation during a year, it will be calculated as national income. So for example, in a particular year, in a particular year, for example, in our country, India, what happens that how we calculate national income through expenditure method that first of all, first of all, total expenditure on goods, expenditure on goods and services will be taken and through them national income will be calculated. Okay, I hope you got the point. So how we use expenditure method to calculate national income is that whatever in a within a year we spend on final goods and services it will be known as expenditure method to for calculating national income for example when you go to a grocery store you will find many toothpaste soaps shampoos and other etc materials so what happens that you are spending on the final goods so in such a way expenditure method is being used to calculate national income based on final goods and services produced within the nation during a year now 
वॉट इज एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड कंसिस्ट ऑफ द टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर फाइनल गुड्स ऑन फाइनल आउटपुट दिस इज द सम ऑफ फोर ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर सो नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड टोटल एग्रीकेट मीन्स टोटल सम टोटल सम फाइनल एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन फाइनल गुड दस इज द सम ऑफ फोर ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज मीन्स एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड कैलकुलेशन इज बींग डन बाय द फोर फैक्टर्स दैट आर रिटर्न इयर फर्स्ट वन इज कंजन सेकेंड वन इज इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड थर्ड वन इज गवर्नमेंट फोर्थ वन इज नेट एक्सपोर्ट नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस दम वन बाय वन द फर्स्ट वन इज कंजम्पन एक्सपेंडिचर so what happens is consumption expenditure that large component of national income so first of all remember from the mcq point of view the largest com- component of national income is considered as consumption expenditure it includes expenditure on all goods and services produced and sold to the final consumer during the year okay so what happens is consumption expenditure that it will include largest component of national income Includes expenditure on all goods and services. Services are those which are intangible. Goods are those which are physically exist. In which transfer of physical ownership can happen. Okay. So now let's talk about another one. That is investment expenditure. What happen? Remember, first of all, remember these three points. Investment expenditure is the use of today's resources to expand. to expand tomorrow's production or consumption for example new plant adding to the stock of inventories on newly constructed houses okay so first of all remember this three point because i have seen in mcqs that these three points are been taken in the mcqs now let's move on what is government expenditure it is second largest component of national income the first one is consumer expenditure the first one is consumer consumer expenditure okay consumer expenditure okay sorry for bad writing so what happens in government expenditure is that it includes all government expenditure remember whatever will include all government expenditure it will be known as government expenditure of of expenditure method now let's talk about net exports so i will tell you about x minus m after finishing the paragraph reading Net exports are defined as total export minus total import. Total export minus total imports. That is what written here. X minus M. X will be regarded as export. M is regarded as imports. National income calculated from the expenditure side is the sum of the final consumption expenditure. Expenditure by business on plant, government spending, and net export. Okay. So the sum of the final ex. Final consumption expenditure, expenditure by business on plant, government spending, and net export. Net export. So first of all, what is net export means? Export minus import. So in the last concluding paragraph that we get to know from here is that national income calculated from expenditure side is the sum of the final consumption expenditure that we read. First of all, then we read about expenditure by business on plants. Okay, means investment expenditure. then we read about government spending and then net exports now let's move on to very 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 important topic known as income method so what is income method let's get to understand the income method measures national income national income from the side of payment made to the primary factors of production in the form of rent wages interest and profits for their productive services in an accounting year so what happens in income method that first of all it include primary factors of production like rent interest for example on loan okay profits and wages this will include this primary factors of production in an accounting year for the purpose of national income now let's discuss detailed explanation of the four categories of payments are briefly described below the first one is wages wages means what it is the largest component of national income don't consider it as a expenditure okay consider it is the largest component of national income if we are asking from the income method of point of view if we are asking from expenditure point of view that is consumer then after that government it consists of wages and salaries along with fringe benefits and unemployment insurance so wages means what wages basically are given to factory workers so wages are basically given to factory workers okay 
Rents are the income from properly received by household. So, what are rents? Rents are the income from properly received by household. It, you can consider it as a source of income. So, okay. The next one is interest. Interest is the income is the income by which private business pay to household who have lent the business money. So, what happens in interest that, for example, I am running a business. I took a loan from a lender. So, I will pay him a specified rate of interest for borrowing of loan. So, it will be considered as interest. Now, let's talk about profits. Profits, I don't have to explain this, but still I am explaining you for the purpose of MCQ. Profits are normally divided into two categories. The first one is profit of incorporated business. Okay, and the next one is profit of unincorporated. Incorporated business means registered business. Unincorporated business means unregistered business. For example, sole proprietorship. Uh, and actually, you see that in your daily life example. For example, whenever you go to a Kirana shop or grocery store, you will find that a single person is handling all the expenses, profits, and all the timings of shop. It will be considered as sole proprietorship. Okay, its uh, registration is not very necessary. Same as partnership, you have seen two partners in a business working together. But according to Partnership Act 1932, it is not necessary that you have to register your partnership and producers cooperatives. Okay. Now, let's talk about following precautions for income method. So, what happens in income method? Precautions. So, while estimating national income through income method, the following precautions should be taken. Transfer of payments. First of all, what is income method? Remember, income method will include primary factors of production. Primary factors of production such as rent, interest and wages. Okay, and salaries. Transfer of payments such as gifts which are not related to income method. Don't consider them in income method because income method is related to primary factors of production. Donation, scholarship, indirect taxes should not be included in the estimation of national income. Illegal money means which are not valid in law's eyes, like smuggling and gambling. Windfall gains means which are unexpected but depends on the happening of an event, such as prize won lotteries, is not to be included in the estimation of national income. So, receipt from sale of financial assets such as shares, bonds should not be included in measuring national income as they are not related to generation of income. In the current year production of goods. Okay, so what is received from sale of financial assets? I hope you all know about stock market. If you don't know, I am going to explain it. So, listen it very carefully. What happens in stock market that uh, a company issues share for the purpose of getting capital, for the purpose of getting capital to expand the business such as shares, bonds. Okay, so such shares and bonds should not be included in measuring national income through income method as they are not related in generation of income in the current year production. For example, in 2017, in 2017, I issued shares. Okay. So, in 2019, in 2019, what happens that I am, I am, I am selling. So, 2017 will be considered as income and 2019 will not be considered because it is a previous year's investment okay i hope you got the point if you didn't please comment down below or message me on the whatsapp number that is given in the description box and if you want to join my whatsapp group yes you can please message me on the description box of number now let's talk about key concepts of national income the first one is gross domestic product so now let's understand it is a major story that the same story that we studied in introduction so in a country same will happen People want to earn money, they will work in a factory, then what will happen? Goods will be produced and total value of goods is being measured is known as GDP. For example, you have also heard that the GDP rating has been cut by the Modi or Prisis, Prisil, sorry if I didn't pronounce it properly. Then goods will be produced and total value of goods and services is known as GDP. So whatever goods and services which are produced in a current year of a country it is known as GDP. Same is national income but the difference is that national income is wider in concept of GDP. For example, national income is related with is related with economic activities, economic activities but GDP, GDP only measures goods and services 
while national income scope is quite wider. Now let's talk about gross domestic product definition given in your ICSI module. So gross domestic product is was is the total value of goods and services produced within a country during a year. This is calculated at market price and is known as GDP. So what did I tell you in example that total value of goods and services produced within a country during a year. This is calculated at market price and is known as GDP at market price. If it is not calculated at market price, it is basically known as GDP. So remember the name Dern, but very important from MCQ point of MCQ market in my notes. And if you want to get my notes, message me on the number given in the description box. Define GDP at the market price. The market value of the output of final goods and services produced in the domestic territory of a country. Same thing Dunberg has said. Just remember the name and its definition. Now let's understand a very important example GDP at factor cost. What happens is GDP at factor cost that for example whatever producers will produce its net value will be calculated through GDP at factor cost. So GDP at factor cost is the sum of the net value added by all producers within the country since the net value get distributed as income to the owners of factors of production. Okay, they are the owners of production. Okay, they are owners of production. So what will happen that GDP is the sum of domestic factor incomes and fixed capital consumption that we read in our previous slide. So GDP at factor cost, remember in this chapter all the formulas are very important. They can ask you to define the formula of this. You have to give them the formula or they give you the formula and ask you, ask, ask you which, uh, what does the formula belong to which term. Okay, so remember the formula GDP at factor cost is equal to net value added plus depreciation. So what happens in GDP at factor cost that all the producers, some net value added by all the producers within the country is known as GDP at factor cost. All the all the producers net value when added it is known as GDP at factor cost. So now let's talk about GDP at factor cost includes. So what, what things does GDP at factor cost includes? First of all compensation of employees, wages, salaries. I have already explained you the meaning of wages. Okay, operating surplus which is the business profit of both incorporated and, and unincorporated. So I, I have earlier told you the meaning of incorporated and unincorporated. So remember the formula very important. All the formulas in the chapter are very important. That's why I am exerting a pressure on the formulas. Operating surplus is equal to gross value added factor cost minus compensation of employees minus depreciation. Okay, mixed income of self-employed. Now, conceptually GDP at factor cost and GDP at market price must be identical. This is because the factor cost payment of factor of producing goods must be equal to the final value of goods and services. Means whatever I produce, whatever I produce, it must be equal to the final value of goods. Means final value of goods. Means whatever is been shown is to, should be equal to the producer's goods at market price. However, the market value of goods and services is different from the earning of the factor of production. For example, I am producing something at 5 rupees and selling something at 10 rupees, it will be considered as difference of earning of factor of production. Now let's move on. In GDP at market price, indirect taxes are included and subsidies by the government as excluded. Let's see the formula. GDP at factor cost is equal to GDP at market price minus indirect taxes plus subsidies. Remember all the formulas are very important in this chapter. Now let's talk about net domestic product. What happens in net domestic product is that remember all the food forms are very necessary in the chapter. Net domestic product is the value of net output of the economy during the year. Some of the country's capital equipment wears out or becomes obsolete. Obsolete means useless each year during the production process. The value of this capital consumption is some of the percentage of gross investment which is deducted from the GDP. Thus, Net domestic product is equal to GDP at factor cost minus depreciation. So what happens is net domestic product is that value of net output of economy, value of net output of the economy during the year. So in net domestic product what happens that for example I purchased a machine, I purchased a machine in 2012. So when I purchased the machine in 2012, it is sure that it is sure that till 2020, 
till 2020 it will become useless it will become what useless so so till that year from 2012 to 2020 what happens that depreciation will be charged if you don't know depreciation let me explain you what is depreciation any asset any asset any asset when purchased when purchased is at full value then during the passage of time during the passage of time what will happen that its value will gradually will gradually decrease year by year year by year that's what happened that i purchased the machine at 5 lakh but now its value is just 10 50 thousands 50 thousands so what happened that depreciation was charged at my machine that from 5 lakh to 50 thousand it came so now let's check out what happens in then domestic product so some of the goods become obsolete means become useless for example my machine has become useless so what happens that for calculating net domestic product gdp and factor cost that's what i told you in the producer's example net value added by all the producers all the producer is known as gdp at factor cost so gdp at factor cost minus depreciation will be known as n net domestic product now let's talk about nominal and real gdp when GDP is measured on the basis of current price, it is called as GDP at current price or nominal GDP. Very important from MCQ point of view, remember that. On the other hand, when GDP is calculated on the basis of fixed price in some year, it is called GDP at constant price or real GDP. Now, I have seen that real GDP formula has been asked in your examination. I will tell you that I will tell you the formula later words on the upcoming slides. But for now, remember that it is a term. When GDP is measured at current price, it is known as nominal GDP or GDP at current price. On the other hand, when GDP is calculated on fixed price in some year, it is called GDP at constant price or GDP at real GDP. Means whenever GDP is calculated at fixed price, it is known as constant price or real GDP. Okay, so now let's move on. So what is real GDP? What happens is real GDP? Okay, so real gross domestic product, it stands for okay we are for real e for uh, sorry real gross domestic product is an inflation is an influ inflation adjusted measure that reflects the value of all goods and services sorry the spelling here is wrong here the spelling is real gross domestic product sorry spelling is correct real gross domestic product i was just mis assuming the formula sorry for that so real gross domestic product is an inflation adjusted measure that reflects the value of goods and services produced by an economy in a year expressed in base year and often referred to as constant price means constant values are being taken for the purpose of real gross domestic product means whenever we are considering constant prices it will be known as real gdp because we are using constant prices to calculate gdp okay it is also known as inflation corrected or constant dollar so real gdp formula very important remember gdp for the current year into base year upon 100 sorry into 100 upon current year index i hope you got the point now let's talk about gdp deflator what happens in gdp deflator gdp deflator is an index of price changes index of price changes of goods and services included in gdp remember very important from the perspective point of mcq it is a price index which is calculated by dividing the nominal gdp in a given year by the real gdp for the same year and it multiplying it by 100 so theoretically it won't be helpful to understand so let's get to the formula gdp deflator means price changes of goods and services its formula is nominal or current prices nominal meaning we have already seen that when GDP is calculated current price, it will be known as nominal GDP. And when GDP is calculated at constant price, it will be known as real prices. Okay. So, its formula is nominal upon real prices into 100. Okay. Remember, very important formulas are very important in this chapter. So, now let's discuss what is gross national product. What happens in gross national product? For example, I am a producer, the total measure of value of produced in the current year will flow to the market. Means whatever I produce, its current year will flow to, whatever I produce in a current year, the total producing goods will go flow to the market of a country 
at market value including net income from abroad and this total measure is calculated with GNP. Means whatever I produce it will go to the market then of my country as well as to foreign country it will go to foreign country too for the purpose of sale and purpose of generating some income on generating some income it is calculated with the help of GNP. Okay so whatever I produce it will go to the market of my country as well as another country and the total measure is calculated with the help of GNP. So let's get to the definition of GNP. GNP is the total measure of the flow of goods and services at market value resulting from current production during a year in a country including net income from abroad. That's what I told you in the example. So now let's discuss GNP include four types of final goods and services. So the first one is consumer goods and services to satisfy the immediate want of the people. So GNP stands for gross national product which will calculate total flow of goods into the market of uh, of a domestic country as well as to the foreign country. It is GNP. So it will include consumer goods and services to satisfy the immediate wants of people. Gross private domestic investment in capital goods consisting of fixed capital formation, residential construction and inventories of finished goods and unfinished goods. It will do include that. Remember, means gross domestic private domestic investment means Investment made within the country consisting of fixed capital formation means which is stuck uh, for a more than one year. Residential construction means you, you all know that uh, construction within the country and inventories means which now. Those who don't know meaning of inventory let me tell you. Inventory is something, inventory is something which is held by the organization which is held by any organization for the production of goods. Now let's discuss third one. Goods and services produced by the government will too be included in GNP, Gross National Product. Net exports of goods and services, the difference between uh, of exports and imports, that's what I told you in the example of USA, that means we are sending goods to another country and total measure will be known as GNP. So it will also include net exports of goods and services, known as net income from abroad. Now let's discuss three approaches to GNP. So what are the three basic approaches to GNP? The first one is income method to GNP. The income method to GNP consists of remuneration paid in terms of to the factor of production annually in a country. So whatever I told you in the income method for calculating product method from product method no sorry. So from income method we calculate national income same way GNP consists of three approaches. The first one is income method which is related to the remuneration in terms of paid of factors of production that is what will be wages and salary, rent, interest. Okay, so first three I have already told you what are their meanings. So please pause the video and read them. I will be discussing with dividends. Dividends earned by the shareholders from the companies are included in GNP. So what is G dividend? First of all you will be asking sir what is dividend? So dividend is basically for example you have all seen Tata company. Okay. So you have all seen Tata company. So when Tata earns, earns a profit, earns a profit at the end of the year, what will happen that it will give its income to the owners and the income will be known as dividends. So undistributed corporate profit means which are not distributed by companies and are retained by them. For example, I earned a profit at Smarty Education and what will happen that I didn't distribute it to the members of the company or shareholders of the company but save them in the company for the purpose of expansion of company. Okay, so three approaches to GNP means first one is income method in which primary factors of production will be considered and those sum total of following items means Income method is the sum total of following items, wages and salaries, rents, interest, dividends, undistributed corporate profits. Now let's move on and see another sums of income method to be continued. The first one is mixed incomes. This includes profit of unincorporated business, self-employed person and partnerships. They form part of GNP. Means unincorporated business means which are not registered. Self-employed person, for example, you see grocery store, self-employed. Okay, so income method of GNP will also include, also include mixed incomes like those who are not incorporated, 
those who are self employed and those who are working in partnership means income method will to include mixed incomes in which all the sectors of organization will be included but those which are not which are not uh, unlawful will be included in mixed income those which are unlawful will not be considered in mixed income now let's discuss what is indirect taxes first of all you need to understand what is indirect tax so the tax which is not directly charged by charged by anyone okay first of all i have a very good example for all of you you have all seen petrol pumps and you have all seen in the newspapers that many many consumers are demanding that petrol should be included in gst why because petrol petrol is a product petrol is a product when enter into the country first of all central tax will be charged then it will go to the state then state tax will be charged okay state tax means vat service tax and other taxes are charged so like number of indirect taxes are being charged with the direct tax that will be called indirect tax such as excise duty sales tax these taxes are not included in the price of commodity but eventually eventually increase the price of the product for example the current price of petrol for example is 1 dollar 1 dollar but our government is even charging high our government is charging 3 dollar per per 1 liter this will be considered as indirect taxes which are being included after they are charged they will eventually increase the price of a product the next one is depreciation i have already given you the machine example okay machine example in what machine example we discuss that i purchase machine in 2012 and till 2020 year by year its value gradually increased to 50000 from price lag to 50000 so now let's get to the definition of depreciation every corporation makes allowance for expenditure on wearing out or depreciation of machines machines i have already told you the example of machines lards and other capital equipments allowance means some kind of savings since the sum also is not a part of the income received by the factor of production it is therefore also included in the gnp that's what we saw in the formula of gnp now let's discuss net income earned from abroad so abroad means foreign and income means you already know intended to generate some profit this is the difference between the value of export and input that i already told you remember whatever factors we discussed whatever factors we discussed in income method gnp according to income method is equals to wages and salaries rent interest dividend and why did we include dep depreciation it's also given here so my notes are very well written so that you can clear cs ed in first attempt okay next income and net income from abroad you can read it or even take screenshot because this is very important so please take the screenshot for me i am uh, pausing for 10 seconds so take the screenshot fastly so now i assume that you have taken screenshot now let's move on now let's discuss expenditure method so what is expenditure method from the expenditure view point gnp gnp is the sum total of the expenditure incurred on goods and services during one year in a country that's what i told you for calculating national income it is the same as expenditure method just the thing changes that in the for calculating national income in expenditure method consumer consumption investment consumption investment and other things were included like government expenditure and uh, other things okay so but in the gnp gnp is the total sum of expenditure on goods and services during one year in a country like private consumption expenditure means includes all types of expenditure on personal consumption by individuals of a country means all types of consumption all types of expenditure consumption by individuals of a country so what does private consumption expenditure means that comprises expenses on durable goods like watch bicycle whatever i am supposed to pay on my private benefit it will be considered as private consumption expenditure okay so whatever i purchase for myself they are final goods therefore they are considered all these are taken as final goods so now let's discuss gross domestic private investment 
under this under this comes the expenditure incurred by private enterprises on new investment and on replacement of old capital it includes expenditure on household construction factory buildings and all types of machinery plants and capital equipment so gross domestic private investment means it will include all kind of expenditure private enterprise on new investment and replacement of old capital it includes all types of expenditure means private investment is what that is made privately for the purpose of individual benefits like in construction factory buildings and all types of machinery plants and capital equipments in particular the increase or decrease in the inventory is added or subtracted from it so inventory means that is being held by the enterprise for the purpose of final good so in particular the increase or decrease is added up or subtracted from gross domestic private income as per the situation the inventory include produced but unsold manufacture and semi manufactured goods during the year and the stocks of raw materials which have to be accounted for it in gnp it doesn't take into account the financial exchange of shares that's what i already told you that in 2017 i issued shares that will be contributed to that current year not to the 2019 okay because their sale and purchase is not real investment but depreciation is added means really physically they don't exist but gradually there is some kind of depreciation added on it okay so expenditure method also include net foreign investment so what is net foreign investment different between export and import or export surplus every country export to or import from certain foreign countries like we import uh, uh, like we import petrol and export uh, some provide kind of raw material the imported goods are not produced within the country as you all know hence cannot be included in national income but the difference that we some we export something and the difference between export and income is known as net foreign investment now let's talk about government expenditure on goods and services so all the expenditures all the expenditure incurred by government on goods and services is a part of gross national product centrals whether it is central state or local government spent a lot on their employees policy it will be considered as government expenditure to run the offices and government also have to spend whatever wherever government is spending assume that this is the government expenditure the formula for it as it is consumption expenditure plus gross domestic private invest so the final formula for gross national product is private consumption expenditure belongs to private consumption gross domestic private investment in investment made by private individuals net foreign investment means difference between export and import that is what denoted here and government expenditure means whatever sum which is made by government it is known as government expenditure for short form consumption expenditure plus private investment plus net net foreign investment plus government expenditure now let's move on the third one for gnp is value added method another value method of measuring gnp is by value added method in calculating gnp the money the money value of final goods and services produced at current price during a year is taken into account so whatever is produced in current year its current price during a year is taken into account for example in 2020 whatever i produce its current price will be taken into gross national product of a particular year for calculating total total measure of production that has flown into the market okay this is one of the ways to avoid double counting but it is difficult to distinguish between proper limits it is one of the ways that we can avoid double counting but double counting cannot completely be ignored so therefore it is difficult to distinguish properly between a final product and an intermediate product for instance for now raw materials semi finished goods fuels and services are sold by inputs by one industry to another for example my final product is something like uh, my final product is steel but the steel can be converted into many shapes so it will be considered raw material for another industry so the problem of double counting can still occur and it can be counted twice the time but it should not they may be final goods for one industry and intermediate for another industry that's what i told you 
Now, GNPY value added is equal to gross value added plus net income from abroad. Remember this formula because it is very important in your ICSI mock test, it is even given to you. So, now let's talk about GNP at market price. When we multiply the total output produced in one year but by their market price prevalent during that year in a country, we get the. So, don't, uh, don't get here. Firstly, we should read the formula. GDP at market price means whatever calculated market price, it will be known as GDP at market price. So, GDP at market price is plus net income from abroad is known as GDP at market price. For now, just remember the formula because it is not very worthy for your exams. Now, let's talk about net national product. So, that's it for today's guys. I hope you liked the video. The video will be provided you when into two parts. I hope you will like the video, subscribe the channel and don't forget to share with your friends for pay education. So goodbye.